He's sitting there pissing on trees, smelling it. But you a queen. She vomited and eating it back up. But yet you a king. What happens is when you are not supposed to be married or in relationship, the dinner is served in this manner. Steak, potatoes, yams, collard greens on a sanitation garbage label. Would you eat that real? Smell good, but it's not presented to me by the right person. This is why we got to be careful of aligning ourselves with what's not ours. Not our anointing. Not our smile. And so God, you can say, God now, I want you to, there's a reason why these, these are lining up. Come here. Come here. Come. God is saying, I love you so much. You help him lay that down. That I'll send a prophet to you who don't want to get in your panties. I send a man or woman of God that don't want to feel how wet you can get or how hard you can get. Can, can we be honest in church? Men do check that time out see it. Don't want it. They don't want to know how you can twerk on it. They want to know how it feels to hit it. They, 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 that's not their agenda. What they want to know is how am I able to help you out of your distress? See, because when you open your legs, see, L O V E does not mean love. It does not mean love. Legs open very easy. Hey! No, it don't. See, so. Am I okay? Right. So, the same one that gave up on God, yes. God sends help. Come on, come on, y'all. <laughs> and when you end up on your road to Damascus, come on. God is waiting to shine a light in your face. Go ahead, turn that light off again, Christina. Now, don't step on the mirrors, but step, come. Walk slow, walk slow. See, God wants you to get on your road to Damascus. He's not reminding you of what you have gone through, but he's putting a thorn in your flesh. And he's standing here saying, there's a reason I didn't save you when I was supposed to. I knew the relationship was going to destroy you, but I wanted to see if you could make it. Can you make it? Now the big mirror was your anger. Am I okay, mom? And when you look down, God has cleaned the mirror. And the scripture is evident when I lift my eyes unto the hills. From which cometh my help, all of my help comes from the Lord. But while she got delivered, there's somebody else who's in her same predicament. But this prophet didn't prophesy. The Lord said that you shall be out of your distress. He said, you are my wife. I'll say it again. I heard you. The Lord told him to tell her that I'm going to deliver you out of your distress. Wow. He prophesied, you are my wife. Mm -hmm. So now he's taking you and he's downgrading what you've gone through. Mm -hmm. See, sometimes you got to appreciate where you came from. Right. right. To appreciate where you are now. Right. And so he's saying, you see that low down dirty nigga? He can do you right. God wanted you to teach out of that. There's a lesson in that. That's how you're supposed to love, but don't love the wrong one. <laughs> Am I right, dear? And so now, you are now in the same place now that you're supposed to see God, but you see the man that prophesied to you. Frederick of God.
So now, come back to you. Now you have God. See, this is when people get mad with God because you feel like that you got skipped. God skipped me again. See, but when you have a prayer life, you understand that your going through is not for you. Right, right, right. That's so true. Yeah, I was broken, but it ain't for me. I got pushed aside, but yeah, it wasn't for me. So God's standing there, and Petrika got her hand up to God. And God is pouring out his love on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God is pouring out the blessings of the Lord. But now God sees the one who's receiving, but now God sees the one who can't receive. But there's a hindrance of a man or woman of God. So God said, the last shall be first and the first shall be last. And he's pouring into her, but she don't believe God. Because all she sees the man or woman of God. So God said, you know what? Since you don't believe who I am, I'm going to make you relive what I brought you through. Come here, darling. This is the last one I'm finished. Hey, And so, come You have a an angel on this side called grace. An angel on this side called mercy. And God is saying, the difference between what you're getting ready to go through is that every time I bring a test back, grace and mercy will fight. They're not going to fight each other, but they're going to fight on your behalf. I'm talking to you. I must be talking to you some way or another. Can you see that smile on her face? God said, all right, this must be a prophetic word for you. God said that grace and mercy is going to fight on your behalf. It does not matter what is going on in your life. Mercy is going to keep you alive, and grace is going to allow you to go through it. You grab Christina's hand. You come. Come in. Grab her hand. You get on that side and hold Janae's hands. Y'all let her through so she can hold her hands. Is, is that when you have a group of broken women, a group of broken men, trying to hold themselves together, the prayer life is greater than people who have it all together. Didn't you have here Jesus? While God is standing there listening to the prayers of the righteous, <laughs> Here comes Jesus. And what Jesus does is, I need a, I need a blanket. Where that red one at? Represents the blood. Throw it. So what Jesus does is he takes his blood. Dwayne, you watch this. Jesus decides to clean the mirror. Not with Windex. But Jesus said, the window and the mirror gets clean with my blood. And I want you to wipe their backs because that's their mirror. Back, I want you to release and we're done. Come around. 
because God is about to do something in your life. How long shall you run from ministry? Go to Jacob, go to Tiffany. How long shall you run from ministry? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Biblical question, how, what is the number eight? <laughs> and so I prophesy to all of you in this circle new beginnings, even before the new year hits. But now what I want you to do is I want you to understand that your mirror has been cleaned off by the blood. That means I can't allow you to leave this altar with the same foggy mirror. You can't leave here with the pain, the struggle, the suicide, the lies that have been put on your life, the fake excitement, the fake happiness. God said it's not going to work. So while you're holding your neighbor's hand, I want you to act like you're holding your hand 10 years ago. I want you to hold your neighbor's hand as if it was you 10 years ago. January 25th, 2019, Restoring the Broken Girl Revival here at St. James. This is just a preview. So I want you to hold you 10 years ago. And I want you in a prayer to fix what happened 10 years ago. See, because we have been living in comfortability and we don't know Anthony. I want y'all to move those mirrors because it's about to get real nasty in here. Okay. Amber, can you turn on those lights for me? Give them enough room. And what I want you to do There's healing in your hands right now. And your hands are burning and I don't even think they So, alright. I want you to pay attention to what you're ready to come out my mouth. You're going to do it and we're going to be out of here. Some of you need to go back to you three years ago. Some of you go back to you ten years ago. And I need some of you to go back to when you were eight years old. Some of you have painted over what you have gone through. You looked in the mirror and it wasn't you. <laughs> 